humans love to take the path of least resistance. And the path of least resistance right now is the internet, staying inside, getting what you need through technology, although it's not actually what you need. Why do you think more guys seem to be giving up and kind of dropping out of society in this generation compared to maybe our dad's generation or generations of the past? I think there's a lot of different factors, right? It all boils down to lack of hope, lack of, lack of purpose. Lack of purpose being no real reason to improve themselves and to try in life in general. It's very difficult to make friends. It's very difficult to break out of your comfort zone. And there's so many things that are instantly gratifying and will replicate the feelings that you could get from going outside and spending more time trying to make an effort to improve both your situation and society situation. And so humans love to take the path of least resistance. And the path of least resi resistance right now is the internet, staying inside, getting what you need through technology, although it's not actually what you need. And eventually I think people realize that, but there are a lot of forces working against young people right now. Uh, inequality is, it's, I mean, I don't know if it's the worst it's ever been, but it's, it's pretty high up there with inflation, with how much housing costs. It's taking a lot longer for young people to grow up now. In some ways, that's good because they can really take some time to figure themselves out and not just jump into the societal pressure that was once there to get married and start a family before you can figure yourself out. For some people, maybe that's the right thing they, to do and that's the thing they need. But other people, you know, they don't, they just did it because they were pressured into it. Now that there's less of that pressure and less of a possibility of that even happening because of the economy, a lot of people, they don't see a way forward. They don't see things getting better. I think you touched on a lot of really important things there. And um, one of my favorite YouTube videos from last year was one of Gerber Johnson's videos that kind of touched on a lot of the economic factors and relational factors around young men kind of delaying the milestones that our parents would say is like growing up, getting married, owning a home, having a career, all that stuff. I think you touched on something really important by saying that the instant gratification that you can get through the internet kind of numbs that pain that you're going to initially feel going through the job interview process trying to go out and face rejection in the dating market, all those things. I really do feel for like the younger guys that went through the pandemic and missed some of the later high school, early college stuff. I know Gerber is a little younger than us um, and he kind of talked about that stuff, but I want to kind of shake stuff up a little bit too. Before I forget to ask, um, I was going back through your videos before this interview and I got so much value from some of your content around breakups and how to move past them. Um, you released a video right after I went through a breakup. And I remember going back to that video and I've probably seen it four or five times, but you give some really valuable advice. And I've had guys reach out to me. I just have a smaller channel, but just through email and Instagram. And a recurring theme is inability to move past a breakup, struggling with trying to just move on in general. I know there's at least one guy that's going to watch this video and he's really struggling to just get past his girlfriend, whether that's months or possibly years in the past. What general advice would you give to a guy like that? Yeah. So during the early stages, you got to give yourself the space and opportunity to grieve. You're probably going to cry if you really cared about this person and love them. And there's no shame in that. You need to feel the emotions that come with hurting, with really hurting. You can't put that off. You can't suppress that. You can't try to run away from it. Allow yourself to internalize, to experience what it feels like to grieve, to eventually move through those emotions. And that would be the next step is, is moving through emotions. So healing any form of trauma that one goes through requires the brain and body to be convinced that they are no longer in the situation that 
cause the trauma because that's what trauma is. It's reliving a, a past traumatic experience and your brain is convinced you're still in that moment whenever you something triggers the brain and body to remember that sort of trauma. So, for example, like after a breakup, you view your ex's Instagram story and she seems really happy. That fucking that's a knife to the chest, right? That's a universal experience for young yeah. men. <laughs> yeah. So apart from, you know, I think you should maybe not block them, but unfollow them or mute all their posts and stories. I think that's really important to move on. It's also really important to uh, to sit with that and be in a setting where you're comfortable enough to experience and accept those emotions. That's the only way you're going to start getting through them. Then you can start to, or you can start the process of transforming your identity, which I think is one of also the most, also one of the most powerful ways to move on from something. So this is something I say in my videos is in order to let go of something or someone, you must outgrow the version of yourself that was present when the thing happened, when the breakup happened in this example, the more that you work on yourself, do hobbies that maybe you didn't have time for, spend time with different people, have different experiences, shape your identity into someone completely different or somewhat different from the, the version of you that existed in the relationship. Well, then it's not even you, the current you that got broken up with. It's me from the past that got broken up with. And so you can separate yourself from the past experience. And when you can do that, then your brain and body stops getting so emotionally charged whenever you think about the past traumatic experience, because that's no longer where you are anymore. Yeah. Dude, I think you touched on a lot of really important stuff there. Um, it's kind of a universal experience for a lot of young guys. It's just going through heartbreak, navigating that. And um, I think a lot of the red pill manosphere type content can be meaning well but can cause more harm than good in the long run because they're just kind of putting a band-aid on a bullet hole and you can feel good about yourself going to the gym you can feel good about yourself doing these things but if you do not sit with those emotions and try to move through them and really work on kind of holistically um moving through that trauma or just that whole process you're going to be kind of stuck in a, in a tough situation and that kind of leads into the next question i had you have a very like nuanced approach to self-improvement. Um, it's something that I really like about your channel. It's not as kind of aggressively like in your face, just more black and white, I guess, opinions. It's more finding what you believe, what works for you. Um, and you talk a lot about romance, relationships, that type of stuff as well. What do you think are some of the things that the more traditionally like red pill masculine space gets wrong about romance? Right. Yes. Let me rethink because <laughs> we tried recording this podcast once already. Let me think what I said. Uh, <laughs> also, since then, I've thought of other things. Yeah, sure. I, I wanted to I wanted to think of more things. Uh, I think the idea that men, most men or all men, would prefer to have multiple partners than just be in a monogamous relationship is a dumb idea. Me personally, I love the idea of devoting myself to one woman. <clears throat> and providing for that woman and putting all my love into that that one person and it seems exhausting to have multiple partners anyway and that it, it seems like you're almost cheating them by not giving them your full attention i know now polyamorous relationships exist i don't really know anyone where that's that's a thing so i i don't think most people really want that especially men or from other things the idea that you should never show your full true self to a woman and be vulnerable around women. I don't personally like that idea with every partner I've gotten close with in the past and in the present. Pretty early on in our relationship, I opened up to them about things that I really don't open up to anyone about. And they shared things with me that they have never really shared with anyone. So it w it was attractive. And then also it attracted them to feel safe enough to, to open up. And when you're really vulnerable with someone, you're 
talking about very human, heartbreaking, negative experiences, and you allow that person to communicate that without judgment, I think that's when you really build a strong bond with another person, along with growing with that person, communicating and getting through hardships with that person is also a great way of falling in love with someone, apart from the limerence falling in love, being totally infatuated with someone you barely know. There was one other thing that I remembered today. Ah, yes, yes. The the idea that men's value increases the more amount of people they've slept with and then women's value decreases. I think uh, you know, if you don't care about body count at all, whatever. But I do think there's, I, I think both genders, there's something to be said about sleeping around with a bunch of people for both genders. I don't think as a man, you become like a super high value, awesome dude. If you're just sleeping around with anybody and having casual sex all the time, same with women. I think we should both hold ourselves to a, a higher standard. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, I'm a Christian and I talk a lot about that on my channel, but even just not from a, like a religious standpoint, I think that if you had an argument of the pros and cons of casual sex, I think the, the cons are going to outweigh the pros in most of those situations. Um, if you don't feel comfortable enough to tell someone you love them, you probably shouldn't be having sex with them or at least feel comfortable enough to really like know them well enough and care about them. Um, I would never, never advise young guys to get involved in those situations because uh, I agree. Like it does not have, there's no correlation between your masculinity or like your value as a guy and your body count. It's just, it's just a lie that I think that some of the red pill guys have pushed on, on younger guys. And um, yeah, I, I think that I really appreciate your like nuanced approach on that type of uh, topic. Um, switching gears a little bit. I know that pretty much all the Pew research that's come out recently has said that in 2024, the loneliness epidemic has only gotten worse. Uh, people are feeling very isolated. I think just like a couple weeks ago, there's a doctor in the UK who was doing a big kind of like public thing where he was encouraging other doctors to have ask all their patients if um, they were feeling lonely because there had been such an increase in self-harm and uh, mental health problems around young men specifically. And that's kind of our target audience and the people that watch a lot of our videos are younger men. What advice would you give to guys that are feeling isolated, lonely, um, and find themselves just overall dissatisfied with their community and their life? Man, that's the number one problem right now, isn't it? It's a heavy question. I think you, you have to create something worth fighting for first off, because then you will want to put in the effort to build a community. A lot of people say like, how do I find my purpose? Where am I going to find it? I don't think you find your purpose. I don't think most people's purpose magically falls onto their lap. I think you create your purpose. I think you decide to voluntarily commit yourself to something for a long period of time until you see measurable progress in it. And then you choose if this thing is the thing I want to devote myself to right now in my life for possibly the next decade or at least a couple of years. Having some sort of higher goal to be working towards. It doesn't even necessarily have to be your career. It doesn't have to be career oriented. If I mean, for men, that's, that's probably going to be the thing, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. It could be something apart from career. You need something worth getting out of bed for every morning and you are the one who's going to create it, you're not going to find it. You have to decide. As far as communities go, it is, it's really, it's, it's, it's definitely harder. I think people are just less social in general. I talked a bit about third places in my most recent video, which are places where you can hang out outside of work and home. And those places have, a lot of those places have shut down in the past like few years, half decade. Also zoning laws prevent residential areas from building in commercial areas. So even if you want to go to a third place, place to hang out, probably going to require a long commute. A lot of people don't like that. I don't like that. I hate 
sitting in traffic. The way society is structured right now, it makes it harder to build community. And then on top of that, you're <laughs> constantly being told and reinforced that you need to be, you need to get your money up mm -hmm. because I mean, fuck, you can't afford anything. <laughs> so it's so might as well focus on yourself and try to get your money up before you even try to make friends, which I understand to an extent. But it, I, I do think it is still possible if you don't have a lot of social anxiety. I mean, there's there's a lot of new clubs emerging. It feels like society now is finally starting to get it a little bit. And there's more clubs and community oriented events happening, especially where I live in Austin. I mean, it's I mean, it's there's a plethora. There's so many. But if you go on to websites like meetup.com, that's a great place to find a club of something you're interested in. And if it's something you're interested in, that makes the conversations with the people there a lot easier because you already have a mutual interest. You can talk about that as a portal into the conversation. And also, you know, sometimes if you just look up category of thing you like, club near me or community near me, get involved in that. Also, recreational sports, super fun. There's probably something, especially if you live in a, a large city. There's something you could join and then start talking to people. And it's probably going to feel like most people don't want to reciprocate the amount of effort to hang out. And that's also a problem with current society is something that we, we, we touched upon when we tried to record this is there, there's two terms that I forgot where the heritage is from, but they're called mockers and schmoozers. So mockers are the people who bring people together they create the clubs they create the events they're the one that sends out the mass text like yo 4 p.m we're doing this everybody come through and then schmoozers are just the people that show up each person each type of person has their place in society but in our modern society <clears throat> it was found in the book bowling alone i forgot the author's name is that the amount of mockers there are now has been reduced so most people are schmoozers. Most people just want to show up to events and not put in the effort to create things and be the one to reach out like, hey, you want to go do this. So you got to be that person probably. And that takes a lot more effort than hoping that that person you exchange contact information with is going to <clears throat> text you first and say, hey, want to hang out. You got to be the person to take initiative. And... It could be just that, that, that you have to be the one to take initiative and that that person actually does want to hang out with you. And you might just be overthinking it, which is what might be have happened to a lot of people listening in the past. They're like, oh, I've, I tried, but, you know, nobody seemed like they wanted to hang out with me. Well, you got to be the, the one to be intentional about it and and create the things, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's oh, I didn't mean to cut you off there if you're still on a roll, but. I guess it's not unfortunately either because that's, I mean, that's a great skill to develop as well as community building, but it does take more effort. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you touched on a lot of stuff in there, but it's definitely easier today to be isolated and kind of still be able to be a productive member of society, like have a job right. and be doing the things. But I think that, um, you know, whether they had bad intentions or not a lot of these guys on the internet kind of push this monk mode protocol and this idea that your 20s are just for getting your money up all this stuff in my experience a lot of life is suffering and it's going to be shitty at times um you're going to have months if not years where you're just kind of trying to figure out who you are what you want to do and going through all those ups and downs of life alone is going to be humbling to say the least and pretty miserable for a lot of young guys if they go that route. Um, I really encourage you if you're watching this and you're a young guy and you feel like you're isolated, do everything you can to build meaningful relationships. Go to church if you're religious. Go to the gym and talk to people. Hit up, like Cole said, like be the guy who's willing to hit up your hometown friends and you know, try to get them together to do something. Um, because 
I think that it's just natural that we are tribal in nature and going through life alone is going to be really difficult. And even if you're locked in on some financial goal or fitness goal or whatever it is, in my experience, a lot of those things are not as satisfying once you maybe achieve them as you think they're going to be. And you're going to look back at that stage of isolation and kind of realize that you put yourself in a, in a very difficult position. So, um, I really appreciate in your content, you know, you push a lot about the importance of community. Uh, I try to do the same. And any guy who's watching this, I would say it's never a bad investment of time to spend time with good people. Um, I know it can feel a little bit like whether this is a, you know, result of capitalism or whatever it is, but like it can feel like you have to spend every hour of your day trying to, you know, work on yourself or get your money right or something like that. Um, spending time with your family, spending time with good, wholesome people, that's always going to be a good investment of time. And it may take more effort than it did historically as far as it's not going to fall on your lap uh, in 2024. But developing that community is such a crucial part of life. And it's absolutely a huge part of self-improvement. Um, because who really cares how jacked and rich you are if you find yourself at 30 alone with no friends, family, nothing. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I know that we did this interview one time and, uh, I messed up. I forgot to ask Cole to record. So this is round two for anybody watching it, but I wanted to ask you the two questions again. I asked you at the end of our last interview, um, feel free to give these same exact answers or add some, you know, differences. But, uh, the first one is where do you see yourself in a decade from now? <clears throat> I'm not entirely sure how, how clear of a picture I can paint because thinking about who I was a decade before now, I was a completely different person and I could have never expected I would be here. But I know as you get older, you, you, you have more stability in who you are and you know who you are better. I believe I know who I am better. I say that now, but I don't, I don't know. We'll see in 2034, but <clears throat> I think I'll still be making videos of some kind. What those will be, I don't know. I don't think I'll be making the videos I am now in a decade. I would like them to be more higher, qual more high quality. And perhaps YouTube will still be a powerhouse. And I'll still be a YouTuber. I, it's also a possibility I venture more towards writing because I would like to write what I proclaim as the world's first self-improvement fiction book. Even though those exist, a lot of people say like The Alchemist is a self-improvement fiction book, uh, but no books have really marketed themselves that way. So I'm just going to use that as a, as a nice marketing tactic. I really do love storytelling. I love creating stories. Fictional stories, especially, I think it's, re it's really fun to world build, create something from nothing that doesn't even exist and make it feel real enough for people to connect with the characters. And all of that while being married and probably having kids is, is the goal. Nice, dude. I'm glad to hear. It. I hope you're making videos of some, some sort. I'll definitely be checking in. And um, the next question, you kind of touch on your channel a lot about spirituality, about um, kind of the spiritual nature that we have as humans. And you talk some about Eastern philosophy. You touch on a lot of different things. My channel is more of just a staunchly Christian perspective. But I also talk about, you know, the, the mysteriousness of who God is and what God is and what we're really doing here on earth. Um, I just want to ask you, who is God to you? And would you consider yourself religious? <clears throat> I have studied religions. So maybe I am religious. I don't subscribe to one singular religion, though. I think there's wisdom to be found in pretty much all religions. And... I don't, I don't know if I believe in the idea of like the, a man in the sky kind of controlling everything, but I do believe 
there are a lot of unforeseen forces in this world that we can never truly understand. And I've had so many coincidences and weird experiences and feelings that are hard to describe as anything other than some sort of spiritual divine entity, I would say. And so <clears throat> I think there is some sort of universal intelligence creating, guiding things, governing somewhat the flow of things, pushing people in certain directions. And that's, that's how I explain being attracted towards certain things or having a certain having a calling within me randomly to to do something and it's not based on any previous experiences or my genetics that i would chalk up to i guess god or some sort of universal intelligence and it's hard to it's hard to think that like okay we started with big bang what was before the big bang why did the big bang happen it's all a little fishy we're the um, we're the only <laughs> self conscious beings that we know of in the universe. It's it's all yeah. a little fishy. <laughs> so I agree. It, it's and it's I think it's beneficial for one to have faith, and and pray. And trust the universe and its guidance. Yeah, I like that answer, man. Cole, I appreciate what you're doing, guys. I'm gonna link his channel. Uh, and his Twitter as well. He's got some slept on Twitter games. So go follow him on Twitter. Go subscribe to his channel. 